Um, our next speaker is Mr. Hartman Holds Grief. And let's welcome him. Okay. Yeah, this is what an example or printout uh, can look like. So you have a map area, and you can have an optional seat index, or you can even have a multi page uh, atlas format that can be generated. And just for a quick walkthrough of the original web interface. So you start by selecting a bounding box, or you can also select a city and have its administrative boundary as defining the visible area. And then you can select a page layout, which is either just plain single page layout or a single page layout with a street index on the side as we've seen it or on the bottom or you can have a multi-page uh, atlas like street atlas like booklet format then the next thing to select is the actual map style you want to render and i tried to provide as many of the openly available map styles as i could so you have the standard open street map style, you have country specific styles, uh, open topo map, and a lot of stuff like that. And it's also possible to select additional overlays. Some of them are just for decoration, like having a compass rose or a scale bar. But you can also have overlays like the waymark trails, uh, hiking or cycle tracks. You can have contour lines. And we have special overlay styles for uh, fire hydrants and a lot of stuff like that that can you put on top of the base map style. And you obviously need a step to select the paper size you want to render for. And you have a selection of predefined standard paper formats, but you can also select a custom size if you have special needs. And the final step before you can submit a render request is that you can add an optional map title to put on top of the map. And you can select a language for uh, the copyright notice that is going to be printed on the bottom. So when you submit such a request, you get uh, your request queued. And you get a status page that tells you how many jobs are in front of you in the queue and how long ago you submitted the request. This page will reload like every 15 seconds. And eventually you would see that your map got rendered. You get a little preview picture and, okay, we can't see it here, but you get download links for the different formats that got generated. There's one for PNG, one for PDF, one for S4G. They're all rendered at the same time and you can then download the one that best fits your needs. And this is the original uh, manual of map production step, but it is now also possible to get the same via an API. And it's basically a simple HTTP API that gets uh, requests passed as JSON and returns JSON. And most of the API is stateless, just the actual render request gives you back a render job ID that you can then refer to in following requests. And the idea was to get all these manual steps out and to be able to integrate the actual rendering queue into uh, other software of your own. And in all the examples now, I'm going to use the CURL client to pass uh, web requests. And in whatever uh, programming language you're going to use, uh, you will have different APIs to uh, generate HTTP requests, but the general idea will always be the same. So here we just submit uh, a form that has one single field. It's named job. And in the simplest example, it just contains one JSON field, the bounding box having a pair of latitude and longitude points that define the bounding box. Everything else is using defaults. And this is the actual uh, 
API URL. So it just remember, uh, submits a render job. And what you get back from this is uh, a larger JSON document that here in the bottom part has all the defaults that were chosen. And in the top part is giving you feedback on the status of the request. So let's make that a bit larger. So the most important thing you get back is uh, the job ID that got assigned. So it's here, 230,000 something. You get information how many other render jobs are still ahead of you in front of the render queue. So here are, you're on position number 11, 10 other jobs need to be rendered first. So the current status of the job is it is submitted, but not rendering yet. And there are no, no results yet, but it is giving you an interactive feedback URL. So we can't see it in full here, but that is basically just uh, redirecting you to the same status page we had here. So if you have some software that uh, files a render request, but then just uh, wants to give uh, visual feedback, you just redirect the browser to that page and you're done. But if you want to have a program or uh, process this further, you can now uh, submit get requests to the same API, giving it the, page, uh, the render request number you got assigned. And you basically get the same status block again, but you can see here, we are now at position number six in the rendering queue. So we go skipping ahead. And you can call this like once every minute to see how it progresses. And finally, we see that the status changes to in progress, meaning your request is now being rendered. And so there's no position information here because we know we are now at the top of the queue. But the files element is still empty because rendering has not finished. And finally, we see status change to done. And we have an array of files here for each uh, output format we generated, like a PNG, JPEG, uh, SVG. And there's a download URL where you can fetch the actual uh, document that we've got rendered. And so this is a more complete uh, request that not only uh, submits a bounding box, but also gives a map type letter language as we had in the interactive API, uh, interactive form. And you can choose a layout, the map style you want to use, an array of optional overlays. Like here I have overlay requested for uh, height contour information and one for uh, max speed that uh, puts uh, color coded max speed information on top of roads. And you can set select a predefined paper size and the paper orientation. Or, or alternatively, you could uh, put in the paper width and paper height in millimeters directly. And that will uh, just uh, initiate a new render job like we have seen before for the simple request. So now the question is, how do you know what values you can put in here for layout style overlays and paper size? So there are additional uh, API calls for that. So the first one is layouts. That gives you uh, a list of paper of layouts that can be used, like here, multi-page, plain, with index. And for each of these elements, the key it returns is the value you can pass into the API. So like here. And for each uh, choice you have, it gives you a short description text and a preview URL that provides a preview image of how this option will look like. So that is like we have seen it 
like here, these images on the right that are the same preview who are images that you also get via the API. So lay it on. Yeah, so the layouts usually uh, don't change. They are always uh, provided. But what can be different depending on the instance, the server you're talking to is the collection of actual map styles. So there's an additional API call called styles. Again, just returns you um, a list of the choices you have. And for each, it returns a description again. Uh, the preview image and also an annotation text with copyright information. Uh, same for the overlay styles. And also pretty much the same for the paper size choices. Uh, here we don't have a description text, just the width and the height for each of the predefined choices. And What's also possible both in the web API and in the web interface and in the API is you can also add uh, certain extra files, especially GPX tracks or the GeoJSON format that is exported by uh, UMAP. And these will be rendered as overlays too. And in the web interface, it's just a simple file upload. And if you know HTTP, HTTP you know that Passing files as part of an HTTP request can be a bit tricky. So in the simplest form, we can just uh, do not upload a uh, file, but we can just add an array of import URLs and give the URLs where our JPX files or UMAP files can be fetched. And then the renderer will take care of downloading these and processing these. But it is also possible to upload files directly as part of the render request. And here with CURL, this is pretty simple. You just add another form field. The name doesn't even matter here. The only thing that matters is that the actual JSON block is called job. And then you can add, uh, add additional local files in here in CURL that is done by just adding an add in and followed by the file name. Um, this is an example of how to do the same in PHP. It's a very simple uh, proof of concept example, so it does not have any error handling or anything, but that way it fits on the slide here. So it's basically the same as with COL2. We have the URL we want to set the request to. Here I add a style, a paper size, and paper orientation. And I add one GPX file, submit the request, and get the interactive status information back. So what I'm using these uh, API calls for is, one thing is I have created an alter alternative front end to map prismatic that can be used to create simple uh, point of interest maps like like this one where you have on the right not a speed index but an index of markers that are on the map it's a bit dark not perfectly visible here but you get the idea And that is a simple uh, browser application that runs completely in the browser and only submits uh, the render request in the end and then hands over to the general status page. I originally had a simple web script behind it that would run the render as a local process, but now it is integrated in the overall map asthmatic uh, workflow. And another application I'm working on right now, which is unfortunately not fully finished yet, is 
I contracted this uh, disease that is going on right now earlier this month. And that is going to get uh, the name of a city. And then we'll use the overpass API to find all hiking routes in that city. It will download the GPX tracks for all these route from away mark trails. And then it will submit one render request for each of these routes. So you get a PDF for each of the individual routes. And it will also do one request for the whole area covered by all of the routes using the Waymark Trails overlay. So you have one overview page in the beginning that shows you all the hiking routes. Then you get a table of contents. And then you get all the pages rendered by the API stitched together as one uh, sort of hiking atlas where you have one page that is really just showing a single route for each of the routes you have in the area. Um, there's also some things I'm still going to add. This one I actually uh, finished yesterday. So in the interactive interface, it is possibly to cancel request when it's not reached the top of the queue yet. This is here, it's still a to-do, but this exists now. So if you filed a request or a bunch of requests and found that there was something wrong with them, you can cancel them before they get rendered. And another thing I want to have, like with this hiking atlas right now, it has to submit one HTTP request for each individual track. And I want to have uh, another API call that can be passed a collection of requests in one go, and then you just wait for all of them to finish. Um, then there is the problem right now. Originally, Mapasmatic only had one single render queue, and everything was processed in order. So first in, first out. And now with the addition of an API, we get into the situation that interactive requests and API requests can repeat for resources. And an API client, especially a misbehaving one, can submit requests much faster than the interactive user can. So I have to figure out a good way to give a priority surrender jobs. Right now, I have solved this sort of by having two different vendor queues, one for interactive requests and one for API requests. That is not live now, but I'm going to roll that out next week when I'm back home. So API clients can each uh, staff each other, but at least they do not impact the interactive experience. And the thing I want to have in the long run for both the interactive front end and for the API is to have user management so that priorities can be given by user to prevent a single user from using the system too much but also to give users additional features like only show me the maps I requested. But that is still only in planning right now. And yeah, that's it. So the API is live. Documentation is, on the, is linked on the last slide. And it is ready to use. Or I also have a project where you can run uh, you can install the whole rendering stack in a virtual machine if you own. I'm still using Vagrant and VirtualBox for that, not Docker yet, but that is a good first alternative if you want to run a totally local stack. Okay. Any questions? Uh, thank you. Um, maybe I missed some points. Um, among the, the export formats, uh, is there any uh, vector uh, uh, format such as PDF? Uh, and uh, mm. e which is the, the maximum resolution for raster formats that you're able uh, to export? Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, there is support for PDF and SVG. There would even be support for Postgres, uh, for, for Postscript as the underlying renderer support that, but uh, I always uh, render uh, PDF, SVG, and PNG in one go. 
And then also have a post-processing step that also creates a color-reduced PNG with just 256 colors for a smaller document size. And also we do a conversion from PNG to JPEG, if someone wants that format. And for the vector formats, there is no specific resolution. That's just what the paper format allows. And for the PNG output, I start with 300 DPI, but for the large paper formats, the underlying render library does not support more than 32,000 by 32,000 pixels. So if that doesn't fit anymore, then I downscale to only 72 DPI. Um, okay, there is okay. a misstatement. Um, you spoke of, I think, the progress you're making with um, the front end and Okay, there is a management part. There is, um, there is, okay, the, you, you talked of what you're working with the user, okay, you wanted to be a user management something. I wanted you to expound on that. Uh, so right now it uh, is, every map request is uh, public, is publicly visible. And as I only have limited space on the server, like, Depends a bit of the traffic, but like two week, after two weeks of uh, files are, are purged, um, there is a link to recreate them. So the preview image, the small one, and the list of requests is always there. But what I'm planning to have is uh, to be able to register as a user or to just log in using OAuth using your main uh, OpenStreetMap account. And then to be able to have uh, to be able to file map requests that are private to you and not going to be visible to anyone else. 